Level zeros are known as the weakest rank of Esper in the Toaru franchise. And yet, not all were created equal, as some have defeated level 5 espers who have powers as valuable as nuclear weapons. But how the hell is that even possible for the losers at the bottom of the esper hierarchy, when majority of them have no powers whatsoever? Whether it's being the exception with a broken ass hidden power, or being a deadly martial arts master, or having an arsenal of different weapons, there are ways for the weakest in Academy City to fight against stronger foes. So let's rank all level zeros in a series from weakest to strongest. Level zeros form the majority of Academy City's 2 million Esper population, meaning it's impossible to go through hundreds of thousands of unnamed fodders in the background. So I'll lump all these guys together before focusing on the actual named characters who are relevant, and I won't be including characters whose levels are currently unknown. First up, we have the innocent, powerless, younger level zeros at the very bottom, which should also include characters like Saturn Royko, Tsuchimikado Maika, and Kanu Shinka. Yeah, not only are these kids completely powerless, they are also physically have negative gains. They also don't carry firearms and have next to no experience in fights. Listen, I know it's funny to say, what do you mean, Aeon? Saturn swings her bat harder than the magic gods combined. She's just below Lord Biagio in power. I'm treating this list seriously, okay? All right, come on. I can't see Saturn even being above the average level zero just because right. she swings a funny bat. Next, we have the average skill out delinquents who roam the more dangerous streets and areas of Academy City. While these dudes aren't exactly world beaters as they are still powerless, <laughs> skill out members tend to be tall and older guys and are often seen brandishing weapons such as bats, knives, and even guns. They also should be experienced in fighting with espers who are higher level than them, as well as typical street fights with other thugs. Before we continue to the actual relevant characters, there are some level zeros that have pretty weird superpowers such as Fromea Savalin and Mago Arisa. Their powers aren't really related to combat, such as Fromea's ability known as Agitate Halation, which makes heroes want to subconsciously save her, and Arisa's ability to create miracles. Both are pretty circumstantial, and neither of them can actually fight for themselves, so I feel like it's an impossible task to rank them here. So there's no way I can include them. Still, it is worth noting that level zeros can have powers, but they don't have any control over it themselves. All right, first up, we have the ugly ass skill out fodder known as Trick, which is a fitting name as you need to figure out the trick behind his power to beat him. As yes, he does have an expert ability known as Trick Art, which distorts the light around him, making it really difficult for him to be hit, as he pretty much deceives your field of vision. Admittedly, his ability is kind of cheating as he was a user of the level upper, a sound file which increases your power as an esper. But technically, he's still classed as a level zero. On paper, at least. Trick actually gave Shirai Kuroko, a level four teleporter, trouble in their fight and had the upper hand. That is until she figured out how his ability worked and took down a whole building in order to defeat him. So Trick is no slouch by any means, but I still think his ability is just an annoying gimmick. So he deserves his place at the bottom. Then we have Hanzo Hattori. Oops, wrong one. Not that one either. There we go. The Toaru Hanzo, who is named after Tokugawa Ieyasu's ninja general from Japan's Sengoku period. Toaru Hanzo is also a ninja and is apparently an expert in ninja techniques, such as deception. But not shit like the Rasengan and Fireball Jutsu, you've been watching too much Naruto. Rather than using weapons associated with ninjas such as shurikens and shit, Hanzo prefers a more modern approach, as he has guns. While he is seemingly a very capable fighter, with a lot more experience than the average skill out Joe, I feel like we haven't seen enough of him in fights to fully assess how good he truly is at combat. Therefore, I think this placement is fair, but feel free to disagree. Ah yes, we have arrived at the filler milk addict Giga Chad himself, Kurosama Wataru. Legit, he should appear in Musashino milk commercials for the ridiculous shit he pulls off. 
Kurosama was the leader of Big Spider, a faction within Skill Out, but he is far from any ordinary Skill Out fodder. This dude is the Toaru Chuck Norris on steroids, as he can legit take on like 20 guys at once without a single scratch. The dude exudes so much Sigma male energy that he can seemingly dodge fucking bullets? Either that, or these guys have severe Stormtrooper aim. But how the hell does he do this? Does he have some kind of hidden power? Nope. I guess it must be the milk. As much as I would love to put Kurosama at number one due to how much I love this guy, he hasn't really fought anyone that has a similar level of skill, which holds him back in my opinion. I mean, beating up that many guys at once is still impressive, but I would be hella curious to see how he would cope versus a strong Esper. We now have a relatively new character that we don't even have any official art of by the time this video was recorded, which kinda sucks. And this character is called Hanayama Kamitsu from the item spin-off novel. She's the courier of the fake item group led by a girl with a long ass name. Hanayama has this modified scooter known as the Dragon Motor, which can reach speeds of approximately 1,100 kilometers per hour, thanks to a jet engine, and is seemingly a prototype of the Dragon Rider bike that I will mention again later. The scooter can also shoot out slicing wires like a spider's web, and is also equipped with metal blades and both of these weapons are actually made from depleted uranium, which is used by the military for tanks and armor-piercing rounds. So it's no joke. Due to Hanayama's fast speed and deadly weapons on her scooter, she is quite a formidable foe, but without it, she is absolutely useless. Hanayama also benefits heavily from fighting in a planetarium where she can move in a 360 degree space as the scooter can travel up walls and upside down. So having the right environment is crucial for her strategy, which is why she's not higher on the list. Up next, we have a shy level zero girl, but definitely an enemy you won't even see coming. And that is Yumi Arako. Rako was the original sniper of the dark side organization known as School. Not only being being a skilled sniper and assassin, but also an expert tracker. She is capable of blending in with her surroundings, essentially erasing her presence. Furthermore, she has enhanced senses with an animal-like sense of smell, which lets Rako follow her unsuspecting prey. While she is a sniper on paper, Rako is a pretty unorthodox one, as she uses two collapsible sniper rifles hidden in her sleeves. Firing from the wrist, the bullet is propelled by a carbon dioxide gas and can use them effectively at long to medium and short range, firing multiple bullets in quick succession. Rako is also no slouch in physical combat either with her kicks. While many other level zeros are physically stronger than her, Rako's expert precision skills and her ability to disappear from plain sight gives her the edge over the others right lower than her, in my opinion. Next, we have the former leader of Skill Out and an absolute unit, Komaba Ritoku. You do not want to meet this guy in an alley at night, even if he is actually a wholesome person inside. As goddamn, he's fucking massive. That's what she said. No legit, Kamaba is described as someone who looks like a gorilla instead of a human being and is 2.3 meters tall. I mean, just look at him next to a wacky. I've seen enough hentai to know how this turns out. Anyway, if we are talking about which level zero is strongest in base without any powers or weapons, I'd probably have to give it to Kamaba for understandable reasons. But with two key pieces of equipment, it allows him to defeat espers more powerful than him. Firstly, he uses tech known as hard tapping, which is a large elastic band fitted to his body, which increases his physical strength and speed to inhuman levels. But at the same time, it causes severe strain on the muscles, making it somewhat of a double-edged sword. Additionally, he also wields a firearm known as the smart weapon, which can analyze its target to cause the necessary level of penetration to deal damage. Whether the target is a hard steel plate or a soft piece of tofu, the gun acts accordingly 
by shifting the required power. This should allow Kamaba to shoot from nearly anything, making it super deadly. Kamaba also nearly defeated Accelerator, the strongest of all level 5s, which is insane. Although he did temporarily jam Accelerator's powers, which left him completely vulnerable. Still, there is no other word to describe Kamaba other than beast. Now we have Frenda Saverlin. She may look like a harmless, cute girl with a silly hat who has a strange obsession with canned mackerel, but you definitely shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Frenda is a dark side member of Item and is an explosive expert. Using stuffed toys as bombs and other items of ordnance stored in her Mary Poppins purse, which is underneath her skirt? How the hell does she keep shit hidden there? I guess Frenda must have a pocket dimension under there or something. Most recently in item volume 2, she is also a tech expert, able to create micro rocket boosters which can be used to fly as a jetpack. Her wide arsenal of bombs make her hard to fight against for the average Joe. Not to mention that even against guns, Frenda is hard to hit, with Racco struggling to shoot her in the vitals. And Frenda is pretty good in hand-to-hand -hand combat, despite her small stature. Therefore, she definitely deserves her spot above Racco. While admittedly, Frenda did have help from Saturn, who was used as a decoy, Racco had the upper hand at first due to her stealth. But once they were properly engaged in combat, Frenda was a superior fighter and said, had that bra to Racco's jawline. While Frenda may lack physical strength compared to fighters such as Kamaba, her many explosives will allow her to overcome much stronger opponents. In addition to her intelligence in combat and the many hidden surprises she has in store for unsuspecting foes. By the way, if you would like to see me make a video ranking all level 4 espers from weakest to strongest, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it. Now we have a character from Genesis Testament, Hanatsuyu Ka'ai, known as the Decomposer and one of the Murder Twins. Together with her sister Yoan, known as the Carrier, she wreaked havoc during Operation Handcuffs, which was essentially the Order 66 of Academy City, as Anti-Skill attempted to liquidate the entirety of the city's dark side. The twins responded accordingly by going on a murderous rampage. While it is likely Yoan is also a level 0, Ka'ai was implied to be one via Shirai Kuroko's comments. But for the sake of it, I'll talk about both of them. Ka'ai can dissolve cells or matter in seconds, brutally killing her victims using scientifically augmented enzymes and bacteria, and is also stated to be able to use any living creature as a biological weapon, while Yoan utilizes rats and other small animals that carry pathogens. Ka'ai can also control these animals to some extent extent as well using chemicals. She uses tens of thousands of rats to block machine gun bullets and deployed methane gas to blur the vision of her victims while also setting it alight to cause an explosion. While Ka'ai nearly bested Kuroko in a one-on-one -on -one fight with her inhuman movement which could dodge Kuroko's teleported metal dart via using rats underneath her like a magic carpet. Ka'ai's control over the rats was not as good as her sister's as Kuroko figured out ventilation reduces her control of them. While Ka'ai is unkillable now, I don't think she can really fight as a sticky blob of mess. While the twins do have some seriously potent abilities as level zeros, I feel like against more skilled opponents like Kuroko, they would definitely struggle. We have arrived at the one and only Super Hamazara! Okay, not gonna lie, with his standard equipment, Hamman should be a lot lower. He's a decent fighter, having given Toma a run for his money until he got taught no jitsu and he has guns which Pretty helps, tight. I guess. But apart from that, on paper, he's pretty average. Of course, his strongest main attributes is his infamous look and ability to adapt to any life-threatening situation he gets thrown into, which allowed him to beat Mugino Shizuri, a level 5 Esper who could probably insta-kill him if she landed a single hit with her meltdowner beams. However, Mugino was definitely playing around with her food as she severely underestimated him, and the other two times they fought, Hamazaru ran away, and Mugino OD'd on drugs. So I don't really count those times as solid wins for him. The reason why he is ranked so high is because of his mecha 
Maker suits, the Dragon Rider suit, and the Processor suit. Both considerably make him a hell of a lot stronger, even without considering his strongest suit of all. The plot armor. With the Dragon Rider bike, he can travel at speeds up to 1050 kilometers per hour and enhances his physical capabilities, although not as much as the processor suit, which actually uses some of the science of accelerator's power to redirect anything which has vectors of physics, which makes it soften blows to him while wearing the suit and increases his strength. To the extent that the power suit is allegedly as strong as a nuclear shelter. With physical strength that strong, he can tank a blow from even the number one level five accelerator. So Hamazura is no joke. Now we have everyone's favorite Siscon sergeant, Suchimikado Motoharu. Not only is Motoharu a level zero, but he is also a magician, acting as a double agent for both the magic and science sides. Motoharu's level zero ability is known as Auto Rebirth, which regenerates his cells and any damage to his body way faster than normal humans. This power works in conjunction with his use of magic, as espers are traditionally forbidden to use it, as magic causes the destruction of the internal organs within the body. Motoharu's ability essentially is what prevents him from dying, but is aware that one day he might not be able to survive. Nevertheless, thanks to magic, Motoharu has many powers that a normal esper would not have access to, with the majority of his spells being based upon Feng Shui and on Myo. His red spell or Shikigami pistol allows him to launch a mass of magical energy or spirit that can destroy an entire building in one strike. He can also control water, such as with his black spell, using it as a projectile, and he is a practitioner of infection magic, which uses a curse to knock the victim unconscious. But that's not the only source Motoharu has as he's also a decent marksman with a handgun and is highly skilled in martial arts. While he names his style Deadly Thrust Killing Slash, it seems to be partially based off Muay Thai. Motoharu purposefully fights dirty, using elbow strikes, headbutts, and knee strikes, while also targeting vulnerable spots in the human body to hit effectively. Yeah, Motoharu is savage. In his fight against Toma, he made him look like an amateur, despite Toma being a capable street fighter in his own right. This definitely makes Motoharu the most skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant amongst the level zeros. And combined with his other abilities, I don't see him losing to anyone below him on the list. Now we are at the broken level zeros that really should shouldn't be ranked at the lowest level, but are anyway. Introducing Shundan Kimi, a level zero child error that was considered to be ranked as the ninth level five by scientists, as she actually subconsciously created a random black hole in space. Quite a leap in power from the others I have mentioned, although it's not like she can really control the black hole, which is probably why she remained at zero. Still, Thanks to this crazy amount of power, it attracted Toma's angel dragon to her and she's able to use its powers as her own, such as manifesting black lightning, launching many feathers that either turns the victim into salt or mind controls them, and its wings being able to block a railgun attack. Kimi is so strong in fact, she probably would have defeated the third rank level 5 Misaka Mikoto in a fight, if not for Uiharu saving her ass. Therefore, due to this absurd amount of power for a level 0, Kimi definitely deserves her spot as the second strongest level 0. Last but certainly not least, we have the strongest of all level 0s. I mean, did you really expect anyone else? Of course it's fucking Toma. As someone who unironically ironically calls himself the weakest, that's absolute cap. You're literally the strongest esper in the entire goddamn city by default by beating Accelerator not once, but three times. But how the hell can Toma be ranked higher than Motoharu when I just mentioned how he got clowned on? Well, that was base Toma. And plus, he's better suited for fighting other espers and magicians with his Imagine Breaker power, which lets him nullify almost any other supernatural ability in the series with his right hand, with limited exceptions. Toma is pretty decent at fighting too, being able to physically overpower guys way bigger than him, like Style. And Toma admitted he's pretty good 
in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but multiple opponents is where he will do the Joe Star family tradition of running away. But that's not what we are here to talk about, or what makes Toma so busted. It's all the crazy ass shit sealed in his right arm. How about the invisible thing that said lol no to Izzard's reality warping and Fiamma's planet busting nuke, or the one dragon that erased Izzard's memory? Wait, did I just say one? How about eight? With possibly even more inside, capable of consuming energy that was going to destroy an entire city at a minimum, and each one having their own unique abilities. And then you have the fish eggs, dragon shell, his Saint Germain form, etc, etc. Listen, if you want a full list of his abilities, you can check out this video on screen, because let's face it, I would be here all day. I think it's a no-brainer that Tomo with his dragons would easily crush all other level zeros at the same time. Legit, he's that powerful. Even Kimmy, with his stolen angel dragon, won't be able to do shit considering Imagine Breaker is a way stronger power source than even a black hole. Plus, one dragon versus seven. I think I know who's winning. Anyway, if you're curious about a level five espers, then check out these videos on screen right now and subscribe for more index and railgun content.